Hi, welcome to The Random Walk and Bayes' Theorem, Part 1. In this three-part series, we're going to look at a random walk. Usually, when we look at an object undergoing a random walk, it starts in some location and we look at where it ends up after a certain number of steps. Here, we're going to do something different. Here in part one, we'll look at an object undergoing a random walk, but we'll consider a case where we don't know the object's starting location. We'll see where the object ends up after a certain number of steps, and then we'll see what we can say about the object's starting location. In parts two and three, we'll see that we can relate this to an important concept in probability called Bayes' Theorem. In addition to illustrating Bayes' Theorem, this three-part series will be a good warm-up exercise if you decide to watch How to Interpret a Scientific Measurement with Gaussian Error Bars or the other videos in the playlist Mini Course on Error Bars, Measurements, and Decision Analysis, available on this channel. Okay, so in this video, we'll be talking about the random walk. We'll try to cover the random walk enough here so that you don't need to watch other videos before viewing this one. However, if you'd like more background information, you may be interested in the videos in the random walk playlist. Okay, let's get started. First, let's briefly review the random walk. Let's imagine we have an object sitting at the location x equals 0. This object will take a series of steps. At each step, it will move one unit either to the right toward positive x or to the left toward negative x with equal probability. We're interested in where the object is after n steps. Okay, so the object starts at the position x equals 0. After one step, that's n equals 1, the object can be at either x equals 1 or x equals minus 1. At n equals 2, so that's after two steps, the object can be at x equals minus 2, x equals 0, or x equals positive 2. And at n equals 3, the object can be at x equals minus 3, x equals minus 1, x equals 1, or x equals 3, and so on. After n steps, there are a total of 2 to the n possible paths that the object could have taken. As at each step the object moves to the left or right with equal probability, all of the paths are equally likely. However, the possible locations for the object after n steps are not equally likely. Let's check that out for n equals 4. Okay, so here we have a four-step random walk. After four steps, the object can be at x equals minus 4, x equals minus 2, x equals 0, x equals 2, or x equals 4. Now, there's only one path that leads to the object ending up at x equals 4. The object has to go to the right at each of the four steps. Similarly, there is also only one path leading to the object ending up at x equals minus 4. However, there are four paths leading to the object ending up at x equals 2. 
the object can go to the right three times and then to the left, or to the right twice, to the left, and then to the right again, or the object can go to the right, to the left, to the right, and to the right again, or the object can go to the left and then to the right three times. Similarly, there are four paths leading to the object ending up at the position x equals minus 2. Finally, there are six paths leading to the object ending up at x equals 0. The object can go to the right twice and then to the left twice, or the object can go to the right, then to the left, then to the right, then to the left, or the object can go to the right, to the left twice, and then to the right again, or the object can travel on three different paths that are the mirror images of the ones that we just saw. Okay, so there are a total of two to the n, which here is 2 to the 4, which equals 16 different paths, all of which are equally likely. Here we show the number of paths leading to each possible ending location after a four-step random walk. Six paths lead to the object ending up at x equals 0. Four paths lead to the object ending up at x equals plus 2, and the same is true for x equals minus 2. And one path leads to the object ending up at x equals plus 4, and the same is true for x equals minus 4. To get the probability that the object ends up at a certain location, we divide the number of paths leading to that location by the total number of paths, 16. For example, we saw that six paths led to the object ending up at x equals 0. 6 divided by 16 is equal to 0 0.375, and you can see that that value agrees with what is shown in the plot on the right. Additionally, four paths led to the object ending up at x equals plus 2. 4 divided by 16 is equal to 0 0.25, and we can see that that agrees with the plot. The same is also true for the case x equals minus 2. And finally, one path led to the location x equals plus 4. 1 divided by 16 is equal to 0 0.0625, and we can see that that agrees with the value of the bin located at x equals plus 4. And again, the same also holds for the case x equals minus 4. Okay, so we didn't have to find each of the paths individually in order to get these numbers. The number of paths to a certain ending location is given by the binomial distribution. For more information, you can check out the videos in the Binomial Statistics playlist. Okay, so far we've looked at a random walk starting at x equals 0. Now let's look at a random walk starting at other locations. Specifically, let's look at a random walk starting at x equals plus 2 and a random walk starting at x equals minus 2. Here we show the probabilities for the ending locations for an object following a four-step random walk starting at x equals plus 2. The plot is the same as before, but shifted to the right by 2. 
And here we have the probabilities for the ending locations of the object following a four-step random walk, starting at x equals minus 2. Now, let's imagine the following scenario. I'm going to flip a fair coin. If it comes up heads, I will start the object on a random walk with the starting location x equals plus 2. If it comes up tails, I will start the object on a random walk with the starting location x equals minus 2. And I won't tell you where the object started. After four steps, the object is at the location x equals plus 2. Given that the object ended up at x equals plus 2, what is the probability that the object started at x equals plus 2? And what is the probability it started at x equals minus 2? Here, we'll answer this question primarily by looking at our plots. In part 2, we'll go back and write it slightly more formally. We saw before that for a four-step random walk with a definite starting location, there were 2 to the 4, that's 16, different possible paths, and they were all equally probable. Here, we randomly choose between two different equally likely starting locations. So, if we go through this procedure, there are 16 times 2, that's 32, possible ways for the process to play out, and they are all equally likely. In 16 of those possible cases, the object starts at x equals plus 2. Out of those 16, the object ends up at x equals plus 2 in 6 of them. And remember, 6 out of 16 is equal to 0 0.375. This is the conditional probability for the object to end up at x equals plus 2, given that it started at x equals plus 2. In the other 16 cases, the object starts at x equals minus 2. Of those 16, the object ends at x equals plus 2 in one of them. And remember that 1 over 16 is equal to 0 0.0625, if you want to compare with the plot at the right. This is the conditional probability for the object to end up at x equals plus 2, given that it started at x equals minus 2. So, out of the 32 possible ways in which this process could play out, there are 7 where the object ends up at x equals plus 2, and they are equally probable. In 6 of them, the object starts at x equals plus 2, and in 1 of them, the object starts at x equals minus 2. So, given that the object ended up at x equals plus 2, the probability it started at x equals plus 2 is 6 sevenths, and the probability it started at x equals minus 2 is 1 seventh. So, we've gotten our answers. Let's look at this visually. Here, we plot the results of all possible paths. Paths that start at x equals minus 2 are in red. Paths that start at x equals plus 2 are in green. We've stacked the paths starting at x equals plus 2 on top of those starting at x equals minus 2. There are a total of 7 paths that lead to the object ending up at x equals plus 2. One path starts at x equals minus 2, 
and six paths start at x equals plus two. Six sevenths of the paths ending up at x equals plus two started at x equals plus two. Those are the ones shown in green and one seventh started at x equals minus two. That's the one shown in red. Alternatively, here we plot the probabilities for the endpoints of the random walk. Contributions from paths starting at x equals minus two are in red, and those from paths starting at x equals plus two are in green. Compared to previous plots, the probabilities have been scaled down by a factor of two because there are now 32 equally probable ways for the procedure to play out instead of 16 paths as previously. The probability is 1 32nd, so that's what's shown in red, and it's equal to 0 0.03125 for the object to start at x equals minus two and end up at x equals plus two. The probability is six thirty seconds, that's what's shown in green and equal to 0 0.1875, for the object to start at x equals plus two and end at x equals plus two. The probability to end up at x equals plus two is the sum, seven thirty seconds. So this is the sum of the green and red, and that equals 0 0.21875. Given the object ended up at x equals plus two, the probability it started at x equals minus two is 1 32nd divided by 7 32nds, which equals 1 7th. So that's the red divided by the sum of the red and green. The probability it started at x equals plus 2 is 6 32nds divided by 7 32nds, which equals 6 7 So that's the green divided by the sum of the red and green. And we can see that this is the same result we got before. Okay, so let's summarize. In this video, we've looked at an example where we see what we can say about the starting point of a random walk based on its end point. In parts two and three, we'll connect this to Bayes' theorem and the prior probabilities for the random walk to have started at the different possible locations.